Today we're going to take a second look at the W1 VLF high Q notch filter now that it's completed and put into a box. W1 VLF Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Uh, today I want to just give a, a second quick go over of the, uh, the high q notch filter uh, that you guys saw in part one. Um, put it into a, a nice box, uh, BNC connectors, shielded cables running in and out, and uh, it's tunable here uh, in the front. Um, we'll set up and take a closer look at what's inside. Um, technically, it, there's not a lot inside, but there's uh, it's hand-picked components and hand-picked values, and uh, we'll talk more about that once I get the cover off. Let's take a look. Okay, so we'll pop the cover off this real quick and take a look inside. Okay, yeah, the uh, W1 VLF notch filter. So, when you're building a notch filter like this, there's a couple of things to consider. If you're looking for uh, low insertion loss and high, high signal rejection on the signal, the station that you're interested in, and uh, you want to have your notch as narrow as possible and have the shoulders come up as quickly as possible. So one of the things you have to look at is the amount of inductance that you're using and the amount of capacitance that you're using. And I hand-pick these. Um, always silver micas for the, for the capacitor and always uh, Litz wire for the inductor. Um, inside this inductor is a core that can be adjusted through here. Through the, uh, there's a brass rod that runs through the center and there's a piece of ferrite on the end, number 61 material, and you can adjust the, um, the, the notch filter for your, for your specific frequency. So if you look at this, well, you know, this little monitor is so small, I can't tell if you can really see. But what that says is this particular notch filter is good from 610 kilohertz to 740 kilohertz. And you say, well, that's 100, about 140 kilohertz, 130 kilohertz, something like that. And the reason you do that is because this is specifically designed for those guys um, that are sitting very close to a broadcast station, like myself, out, out that window is um, WSNG, a few thousand feet away. It's a kilowatt, it's a plus 70, like you saw in the other video. Um, and what you want to do is you want to get as deep a notch but you don't want to disturb the stuff that's on either side, as little as possible. Um, so in, in that case, you really need to think about what these values are going to be. The value of the inductance here, the value of the capacitance, so you get as deep a notch, but not so, um, not so deep, excuse me, not so broad, so that it really disturbs, you know, 10 channels up, you can't, you can't see the, um, the signal that you're looking for. Um, with a single stage like this, you can, only, you can only do so much, but these are optimized values. So for wherever the frequency is that, of interest, this, will, this particular filter, you can get uh, 35 dB over 610 to 40 kilohertz, and we'll show you that after on the, um, the network analyzer. Um, shielded cable going into uh, to the, the LC network here. Uh, BNCs on the side, those, those really could be anything. Um, and this is just uh, that CPVC pipe. So, um, but the hard part, I guess I left a little bit of um, drill, drill, uh, drill material in there. Um, the, the hard part is really coming up with the right values to get the, the, the maximum insertion loss on the frequency, minimum insertion loss across the band. Now, I know you guys already saw this, but after that last video, I had a bunch of people ask me, if I could make them one of these filters, and I said, no, I can't really do that because I don't, I don't have it in a box or anything. You know, what I built was for you guys to try to duplicate, but 
Um, I did I did make one up for a guy and, and send it out, and I said, you know what, maybe I can make up a few more of them. So if anybody's interested in one of these, you can contact me um, at qrz.com. My email address is on there. Um, and I can, like I said, you tell me your frequency of interest, and I'll build one up around that frequency. Typically across the AM band, you're going to see somewhere between, like, say, 28 and 35 dB of loss. Um, if you, uh, and that's, that's a lot of loss. Um, a 30 dB, uh, notch filter like this will take a 10,000 watt station and, uh, drop it down to, um, uh, a, w what looks like a, a hundred watt station. I mean, uh, a one watt station. So, um, they're very, very effective. Um, but this is not tunable, and, 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 and other guys had asked, well, can you make one that's tunable everywhere in the band? And not really, not, not really. Yeah, you could put a variable capacitor in here, a 365 puff, and you could also put the right amount of inductance in here, and it would definitely be tunable, but you'd have a notch that was so broad that half the AM band, band was gone. So this, this here is this here. <laughs> this, this filter is more of a single channel. I have a 610. Uh, gentleman that uh, I made one for had a 1460 that was uh, 10 kilowatts, just a mile or so away, and uh, that came out really nice. That worked. That worked well. So anyway, if you want to contact me, it's qrz.com. Let's take a uh, look for my call sign w1vlf under qrz.com. It's in there. I'm not going to post the uh, the email here. Uh, also. Uh, we're going to take this over to the network analyzer and take a look at what it looks like right around the frequency that it's designed for and then also across the whole 30 megahertz band. And I think you'll be impressed. There's no more than a half a dB insertion loss from uh, 100 kilohertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. So let me, uh, let me set it up over there on that bench and, and we'll do that. I'll be back. Okay, this is where we're going to be doing our testing. Just wanted to show you the bench there, and now I'm going to put you up on the on the, the main screen so you can see what these look like. Uh, I'll be adjusting this to, to move the notch around. And I have two markers up on the screen. You'll see those in a second. And those two markers are at the extremes of, of where this filter will tune. Um, and we're going to look at it a couple ways. We'll look at it across 30 megahertz, and then we'll look at it across 5 megahertz. So let me set up for that, and you can take a look at it. All right, so there's the baseline measurement down 70 dB of just noise here. And the first thing we have to do whenever you're making a measurement like this is to calibrate. So we're going to take our, our cables here, and we're going to just put a BNC connector in. And that line should level off right at the top. Okay, so that's calibrated now. Let's put the filter in and see what it looks like. It's going to drop again to the bottom. And I'm going to be uh, adjusting the knob here. Uh, let's see, marker 2. Marker 2 is at... Well, let's see, where are we? 736 kilohertz, roughly. I just tuned it to that frequency, and I don't know if you can read that or not, but that shows uh, about 35, 36 dB of loss. Now I'm going to take the core and push it in. This is sort of like a ferrite loop stick, actually, right? Um, but just try buying a ferrite loop stick somewhere, and try buying it with the exact values that you want. So everything here is handmade, which makes it look pretty good. So now I'm going to start moving the core in, and I'll stop every once in a while like that. You can see the notch is moving lower in frequency. Okay, and we're going to come up to uh, marker 1, which is at 615 kilohertz. And as I approach it, you can see that the loss at, 600, uh, at 615 kilohertz gets to be a little bit more as I move the core in. Okay. And now we're getting closer to where the where it's notched at that frequency. I'm going to start riding down. Okay. 
Okay, and uh, there'll be a locking nut on here too. So what do we have there? We have 37.2 dB. I guess I could get it just slightly better than that. But uh, basically, uh, down at 100 kilohertz, or excuse me, 10 kilohertz, no, no, no loss whatsoever. And up at 2 megahertz, no loss, uh, all right, a tenth of a dB or, or maybe half a dB up there. Um, but essentially no loss. So let me, uh, let me set this up to 30 megahertz so you can see what it would look like. Suppose, you know, because here's the deal. You might want to listen to the AM broadcast band, but then on that same antenna, you might want to uh, be listening to shortwave or anything up to 30 megahertz, and you don't want the filter affecting that. So let's, uh, let's uh, change the span from 10 kilohertz and 2 megahertz up to 30 megahertz and see what's, see what's going on up there. In order to do that, we have to calibrate it first. So I'm going to change the uh, high frequency here to uh, 30 megahertz. And you'll see that the line drops down and it's all distorted. So I have to do a calibration over here, store through. And in a second or so, that will go back up to the top and have a nice flat line. Okay, that's done. I'm going to pop this out and we'll put the filter in over here. And see what that looks like. <clears throat> Got to let it make one or two passes. So if you look over here, you can see that there's uh, over in excess of 30 dB of loss. Actually, I'm not taking enough points here to show the actual dip when you're in this wide of a span. Um, but there is 30 dB of loss there, or or more, 35. And you can see once it returns, it's just perfectly flat all the way up to 30 megahertz. Actually, you know what? There's something I didn't try. I'm going to go up to uh, 50 megahertz, let's say, and, and see what happens here. Let me, uh, let me just put that in uh, 50 megahertz and see what happens. Oops. Okay, now we need to do the uh, store through to calibrate it. That's done. Put the filter back in again. Okay. So... There's a tiny little bit of loss up here at 50 megahertz, probably a dB or so. Let me stop moving around. I should probably have it take an average. And that will uh, that will clean clean that up. Okay. At least it won't move around too much. So there's about a dB at 50 megahertz. So this uh, this filter would be very very clean for knocking out a station that was. Um, you know, a real big fundamental overload on your receiver. I'm going to set the camera back up over there and just have a couple final thoughts on this. Okay, so a couple final thoughts. One, can you use this across, can you tune it from one end of the broadcast band to the other? And the answer to that is no. In order to keep really good specs like, like you, I showed you on the analyzer, you need to build it for a very specific part of the band. Um, and in this case, it's about 100, about 100 kilohertz. Um, and the other thing to think about here is a couple of questions that I answered was, uh, people, people say that, uh, geez, I have this overload problem. You always have to remember that the overload can take place, well, three places. The overload could take place in a, in, a, in a couple of areas. One, it could be happening in your receiver. Okay, that's one thing to think about. In which case, this filter will help happen immensely. That's the main reason why these filters are, are around. Uh, two, if you're using an amplified antenna, if there's overload happening in that antenna, those products are generated in the antenna and preamp before they ever get to this filter and you're not going to get rid of them. So uh, once that happens, it's all over. Um, so, and the other thing to keep in mind is, an, is a, a large um, passive antenna, like a dipole or something like that, this filter is going to work really well on. But it will not do anything for you if, if the noise or the uh, RFI, the, the interference is um, generated on, uh, inside the antenna because it's already been created and now you're coming to your receiver and you're hoping that, well, um, you know, it's, uh, what am I trying to say here? It's, it's already been generated. It's there. You notch out the fundamental. doesn't matter. In my case, for instance, let's, let's take my case. I have a 610. 
So my second harmonic is 1220. It's in the AM broadcast band. Um, so that's not really a big issue. But the third one's on 1830. Um, so if I notch out that big carrier at 1830, I mean uh, at 610, the, all that distortion will go away. Now, the other thing you have to, <laughs> have to think about too is, and I've dealt with this a couple times at work now, is that if you're two miles away, or in this one case uh, that I was just working with, uh, 2,000 feet away from a 10 kilowatt station, um, that's a plus 70 dBm signal. And just think about it, the broadcast stations need to have uh, a minus 80 or 84 dB, depends on the power level, uh, attenuation of all spurious harmonics. So 80 dB down from a 70 over is going to put you still at an S8, S9, S10, somewhere in there, depending on how well calibrated. Um, 70 dB over S9, and you take 70 dB out of there for the second or third harmonic or any spurious emissions, you're still going to have a seven, uh, an S9 signal. This is though prim primarily designed to get that receiver out of clipping on the fundamental frequency. So you saw how well it worked in the last video on, on, on my particular um, problem. And 30 dB, unless you're sitting right on top of the station, should be enough to get you out of uh, almost any, any sort of problem. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it for now. Thanks for uh, watching. Uh, let me know if you're interested in something like this, um, and I'll get back to you. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate you doing it. Oh, yeah, 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 I got 100, um, 1,150 subscribers now. So it's like, holy mackerel, like out of my mind with that. Um, that's, that's really good. So thanks a lot, everybody, for coming on board and, and watching this video. Um, I don't know what else to say. Please subscribe, I guess, or share it with your friends. Maybe, maybe they'll have some interest in it. 73 for now, W1VLF. And the notch filter, we're both signing out of here.